Well, when you sit down to write a blog post, is, is it comfortable to, to do that kind of thing as a creative activity? Are there times when the words are stuck or you're just not sure what you're really trying to say um, or, or like you know what you want to say, but, but the how isn't really working? Well, recently I finished a, a hundred days in a row blogging challenge and that project plus other experience from writing it like, uh, well, general team collaboration, uh, do different UX writing things, manifestos for working together um, and pitches for funding. Well, I've noticed things that, that I've been practicing that I think would be helpful to share. Here in this mini workshop episode of the Lean Into Artcast, I'll share some of these practices to write quickly with constraints and prompts and instinct. And I can't wait to hear Jersey's thoughts on this because I wonder if they'll be similar or go in other directions for how he tackles writing. Hello and welcome to this Lean Into Artcast mini workshop episode. This is where we explore an art or creative task and demonstrate how we think about it and work on it. My name is Jersey Droz. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist. And I'm Rob Stenzinger. I'm a UX designer, interactive maker, and teaching artist. Ah, good to see you once again, Rob. And excited about this workshop or mini workshop because this is something that I think I get stuck on is writing the copy that goes along with the things that I make. That's, my, that's the angle that I'm probably going to be most excited about because like I made the thing. What's your thing? Oh, now I gotta like write it like 500 words about it. No, I did the thing. Here it is. Look at it. <laughs> Look, it's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's uh, it is shared. Yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be useful. Whether it's um, yeah, writing copy about a um, a thing that you made and you need to you know present it or merchandise it or something somehow give it a sort of a a, a verbal life and um. It's certainly useful here to, if you're if you're thinking of posting in a variety of situations. So uh, um, that's I mean that's what we'll cover here. We'll talk about like we're doing right now why this matters. We'll do a demonstration, give you an example to try, and um, you know talk about what was um, you know what's what we feel better about having explored this topic. So now. Um, yeah, if if people are are tuning in and they don't necessarily have that direct connection with the topic like I just expressed, who mm -hmm. would you say needs this and why? Uh, well, you probably write messages to someone somehow. It could be in a forum or in a newsletter. Uh, newsletters are a pretty useful thing. Yeah, they're fairly ubiquitous. Yes, they can be a mixed bag as far as the ones that you subscribe to or whatnot, but you can always unsubscribe. But th honestly, they're one of the, they're a really powerful, important tool if, for independent creators. Uh, I I'm fully sold on that, and it can sound like ah oh, whatever. So what? I'm not gonna. This whole episode isn't about newsletters, but it's certainly a common need, and it's um uh, because you own the conversation. There isn't an in intermediary shaping what happens, and that is very powerful and unique so <laughs> where uh could be texting could be uh forum posts discord patreon like so like you need to post your thoughts and talk about what matters to you somewhere mm -hmm. yeah okay what what are we gonna work around are there any things to look out for in this bog well, I mean, time constraints are certainly a big deal. I mean, you want to, to get your message put together in a reasonable amount of time. Um, it's uh, thinking of the what and really getting your words out the, the, that, that are, you know, here for you right now isn't, isn't always easy because this sometimes is the extra thing like you just described where you're, you know, I did my post. It's cool. Check it out. <laughs> and it's cool. Check it out is text. But is it enough? Is it given, you know, does it really pull people in and get to the heart of why you care and into a, more of a narrative about the thing? It's often that extra work 
to yeah. do. Yeah, there's there's a Sebastian Maniscalco joke where he talks about his dad, and he said like if he if ever if ever he told his dad, uh, who's you know first generation immigrant to America, he's like, oh, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go to California and find myself. He's like, you gonna find yourself? You're right here. I found you. You're in my house. Right? It's like we have to be careful about our language. <laughs> language matters. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, let's see. And, and somewhere in there, what, what I'm hoping to do, I mean, this is a, it's a mini workshop. It's not going to be exhaustive, but like hopefully find ways to, to sort of tease out that, um, idiosyncratic, your voice into the thing, because, you know, forcing yourself to fill ideas into a, a certain volume isn't really what we're talking about either. We're trying to, you know, get your comfortable language out. And mm. that's, that's different. And, and, you know, so even if you sort of get past the resistance of, well, I need to describe the thing. Well, hopefully it's, it's more than just the, the factual th set of uh, descriptions and it's, it's, you got feelings in there too. So, cool. um, yeah. And what we'll do is we're going to use some prompts. We're going to use some constraints and, um, and I'll honestly, I'll work on a post while we're talking here and, and, you know, it's, it's an example for, uh, for us to, you know, to explore. So I may pull the cooking show trick of, you know, the classic, this is one of my favorite metaphors to misuse, like, like talking about stunt people and whatnot. Um, cause it's, they're actually not cavalier at all. They're super scientific where, um, but metaphorically we can talk about it being cavalier. So in cooking shows, they'll, they'll be like, ha, ah, we just prepared the thing. Let me put that in this oven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, Oh, look at the time I'm pulling it out of this other oven. Dun, yeah. dun, dun. I'm probably going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> That's great. Okay, cool. Uh, so how about, it's, it sounds like you've, you you prepared us for success. I'm ready to dive in, uh, but let's let's take a three minute break before we get there, and um, you know talk about some people who make the show possible. If this is helping you think and do creative, uh, useful creative work, uh, a great thing you do is support the show by supporting us on Patreon. There we go patreon.com slash lean into art is the website and it's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote if you believe in the work we're doing if it's helping you do creative work you can support us for as little as a dollar a month and i want to thank five people who've been doing that dado thank you dado for believing in us and what we do david armand trout thank you david kelly ishikawa good to see you kelly matt zolman and Nate Marcel, thank you so much and you can also check out our brand new lean into art labs which I mean, let me tee it up for you. What's a, what is a lab? Well, do you need a place to show your work in progress? We can all use encouragement and feedback. Have you found the gentle creative project pressure of a due date or a demo day useful? The Lean Into Art monthly 90-minute lab session is a place where we host creative group prof of professionals developing their projects. The constraints give it meaning. It's a chance to show up, to share what you're working on, and what might be blocking you. And we will be there to encourage you to find new possibilities. It's also a place to work in the presence of others, whether you choose to share or just hang back. Each session held on the third Wednesday of every month is facilitated by one of the two hosts of Lena to Art. Both me and Rob have decades of experience in teaching and facilitation of creative groups and processes for all kinds of projects. Each session will be a unique one-time experience. Sign up to reserve your spot for the low introductory price of $10 per month through our Patreon patreon.com slash lean into art. Thanks to everybody who supports us there. It means a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay. You know what comes next? You me, you mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it good. never uh, fails. It never fails. If you aren't fired up to learn something right now, check your pulse. Check your pulse. Go to see a doctor. <laughs> that theme song, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's so beautiful, sincere, and and uh, and and uh, joyfully shouty. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that sounds like us. All right, so. Demo time. Where? Okay. How do we begin? Well, okay. So you need to, the idea of, of uh, you know, the flow of this, we're going to talk about, um, you know, b before you start 
and then what it's like to start and then, you know, get a post out. That's our goal here, right? And well, uh, you'll need to choose somewhere to write and, you know, pick somewhere that you feel comfortable and safe writing. Um, I am not a huge fan of writing directly into web pages overall with one exception. And that's, that is um, uh, the, the Google tools and maybe equivalent competitors, right? So something that was purpose built to make sure your work is safe as you type it along. Um, something that's just like, um, no offense, but like a blog press post form, um, Squarespace form, I wouldn't work directly in there. I work somewhere that you can save your work, come back to it. And, um, uh, and ideally it has some kind of word count option. And, um, I use Typora. Um, I don't know. If, that's funny. I, I always get hung up on pronunciation. I'll just, yeah. So I'll say it again. Typora. It's a, it's a free open source app. I think they intend to go paid at some point, but, or is it open source? No, I don't. Eh, it's free. There, I know it's free for sure. So it's uh, this is a markdown editor. I happen to write in this way, but you should write in whatever tool that you feel comfortable with. I like that Typora has a um, a built in uh, word count thing, unobtrusive, simple look, what have you. But you could use Google Docs. Also, um, there is a word count in the menus that you can activate. Not a problem. It can it can be ever present too. You don't have to just sort of. Uh, check in with it and have a dialogue pop up. It can be there the whole time you're typing. Hmm. So you've got your tool chosen. If you're going to, you know, start start working. What 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 are you really doing? What's the general purpose and circumstance here? Those are your constraints, and they're good. They're your, they're they're helpful to to get you to um, uh, uh, move you further along toward getting a post done and getting the right kind of post. So the constraints I like to think of are time, knowledge, your container and audience. So, uh, to describe those, um, so and by the way, Jersey react and stuff, chat along mm -hmm. the way. If you, you've got thoughts or questions, I will, I'll jump I, in when I, um, cause, uh, that is, I mean, we tend to whoever's presenting the mini workshop does a lot more talking, but um, <laughs> but this one, I don't know. That's it's. Uh, well, I, I guess I guess I, if I were to like come in and ask for clarification on something, when you say audience, um, I think it's worth brainstorming some examples of what audience means because I think something that I as as a beginning artist fell victim to was my comics are for everyone, right. I'm like, okay, well, older me now says, yes, that, that's, that's ideal. That's lovely. It'd be great if everybody loved your comics, but you're probably making them for a very specific group first. And the way you talk about it around that probably matters, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I bet we have different audiences in different contexts, right? As totally. somebody who works for, like you do consultation with big businesses, you do co personal one-on-one -on -one coaching, I imagine the writing you do around those two things is very different. I think yes, overall it is, it is different. Um, you'll want to think of, um, well, well, what matters to these people and why, who are they specifically? And, uh, that's, I mean, that's the functional thing about a constraint. It's not a constraint if it is adding ambiguity overall. Um, a constraint causes something you need to adapt to. And you you want that because um, we want to have some specific enough words to, um, to to make useful for this particular group. So a uh, particular person. So who's this for? It could be a specific person. Um, you could say, I really want to make, you know, my friend um, Andrea laugh, right? Um, I, that, there you go. This, I've, you know who it's for, you know why you want to, you know, it's for, it's, it's to be playful and cause, uh, joy. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I get the, I get the whole thing of, well, it's enough to just think about the topic. Why do I have to think about who it's for? Um, it's, it's not necessarily going to fully change every single word that comes out of your mind, but it will cause, um, it, I, I think it will cause you to adapt in 
in sp- you know, particular ways with either, even rough ideas that come out where like, hey, wait a minute. Um, did I talk about this, you know, um, like why, like the setup for this joke for, for, for this, for this person, or did I mention how, because I'm, I'm talking to a technical, um, audience that really cares about a particular kind of jargon. Am I, am I contextualizing this general thing in their specific way? Because without using their jargon, they're, they're not going to probably fully groove on it, trust it, connect with it because it doesn't feel like it, it feels other to them. Yeah. I I was thinking, I was thinking about this this morning when I was doing a live stream uh, for my Patreon and I started getting kind of like worked up and excited about the design language that I get to explore with the Baron von Bear's little ghosts, his wisps. And so I talked about how like, oh, well I get to express how their personality is in the way they move and violet moves in very angular motion and, and blue has like this crystalline kind of like frozen kind of glow around her, whereas green has a very organic shape to his movement. And then I stopped myself. I said, is this interesting to anybody but me and other practitioners? Like, would this be interesting to a 12-year-old? Probably hmm. not, right? Not to diss on 12-year-olds, but what they're probably going to want to talk about is what happens in the story. What are the things that happen? Um, yeah, I and mean, right. What, um, what cool abilities and powers do these things, are they imbued with? And uh, like, what can, what can they do with them? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, empower is a is certainly a big um early reader thing and or you know young young adult thing i mean just empowerment what it means for that particular age right so uh, that's an awesome example. but what about what okay so now you're sitting down to write you got your audience in mind so yep. what are the jobs that you're signing on for rob because i think there's more than one um yeah for sure there's so um like more constraints do you think um yeah yeah okay so you know who you want to talk, who you want to talk to, and why. But then, dig deeper in, as far as like, well, what do you want to say? So this is a so time, knowledge, container, and audience. So for knowledge, um, what questions do you have about mm. this? In like new questions, but also questions you just experienced exploring. Those, um, like re- reminding yourself of that recent fresh experience that you had because of your things you were curious about. That's going to set you up for something to say. Um, well, now your purpose, but okay, you may know some things as far as questions, but like, why are you really saying this? Well, um, you may have multiple purposes. For me, I have a blog that supports multiple creative projects. I consider my blog as a lab. That's this is my blog's at interactive-storyteller.com. And it's it's sort of my studio place where um, folks that visit it will get to notice I work on mul- multiple kinds of things. But when I talk about one particular kind of thing, I don't assume you're into all the other things. I I I get into a mode that's focused about that particular why. So I talk about um, user experience design because I care about being an educator and, and, and teaching artists to help others uh, find their way of including others in what they make. And that's a big deal to me. That's my why, right? So what's your why for this, for this topic? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, and then if you have questions, you probably have something to say, but really say, okay, do I have something to say on this? Because that, that is not a great way to set yourself up to succeed, to be saying, I need to do a bunch of research before I do this post. And th- what this, this mini workshop is about isn't that kind of thing. It's about a post you're ready to post, not a post that you need to get ready to post. Those are great and useful and powerful different kinds of um, places you can go with, with uh, deep research and stuff. Um, but that's a separate... Um, separate idea, separate concern from what we're talking about here today. So, all right. So then you know who this is for and why you've got, you know, that you have your, so you've got your audience, you've got your knowledge, you know, set of concerns addressed. Um, but then, uh, what container, what size, volume, place, where does it, where's this going to go? Keep that in mind. Is this, um, uh, if it's a blog post, like for me, I experienced the need to produce words and an image because how blo- how um, social networks uh, present 
my post is vastly improved when I include an image along with the the post, right? So hmm. I need to care about that with depend because of where I'm going to put it. If this is just on my Facebook wall, maybe it doesn't need an image, that kind of thing. Um, or maybe the volume of words, uh, you know, is something I need to th be extra careful with because it's um, honestly something for a Discord um, community thing where you're like, ah, I'm staying connected with my Discord community is going to be a different volume than, well, maybe a blog post about a particular experience or other th kinds of things. Um, and then, um, so let's say uh, you you know your container. Um, and by the way, my thing I'd like to, to, you know, based on my recent experience is 500 words is a nice granularity. 500 words gets some amount of narrative and thoughtfulness about a concern out. And that's for me, right? right? That works for me. I think other folks could do it in less words or it may take 700. Um, but 500 is kind of a sweet spot that I've experienced. So I think it's a worthwhile thing to play with and find what works for you. Um, and that's where I mentioned having that word counter in your place to write is very helpful. All right. So now last would be your time. So you're going to put some effort into this. Um, you're going to put in different kinds of effort, right? Well, um, the writing hats to, to make this, you know, useful work to, to meet your, your, your goals, right? Um, you have a little bit of planning to that you'll that we're doing right now we're, we're we're shaping constraints this is the planning part of doing the work um then you've got your writing to actually get the words out but then you're editing and publishing so useful to think that when you're starting this it's probably not just you know uh, a haphazard thing you can get through this task easier and faster by acknowledging different um sort of jobs that need to get done so and then, of course, there's the two different pieces of time to think about next would be the time you, well, how much time do you have available to, to make this? Do you only have 20 minutes? Do you have a few hours? Well, a few hours, you're for sure, like you're, you have super low risk, I think, to get 500 words done that, that, that meet the task in, you know, in, in a couple hours. Um, 20 minutes, that might be a little, little tough. You, you might pull it, you could pull it off though. Um, so worth noting. And then of course, when does it have to be done by? So maybe you have a few 20 minute sessions because, ah, this isn't due today. This is due next week or what have you. So worth noting. So that's, uh, this, this, so this is all about getting a post together that keeps you in touch with you're, you know, showing up for that, that community you're connected with. All right. Mm. So constraints, what do you think? Any thoughts on those? Um, no, I, th I think that that, that feels you've mapped out a territory for me and I feel prepared to engage with it. And I already started capturing a whole bunch of notes while you were talking, uh, about like the moment you started talking about like audience, it helped me shift my perspective to thinking about, well, what's a story I could tell about my childhood that relates to why these ideas of the story are important to me to help somebody else who is a child reading this understand what this mm -hmm. means in a non-tactical, non-jargony way. So instead mm -hmm. of talking about design language of the Bear Mount Bear's little wisp ghosts, let's talk about what their function is in the story, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and relate it to something that I experienced as a child, right? So now I have a journey to build and 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 I and I even captured some philosophical thoughts about like okay what are the bigger ideas behind it that all revealed itself through you talking about these constraints so now it's a matter of me figuring out okay well where can I put this in my schedule so finding 20 minutes someplace would be the next step so let's suppose that I've I take my notes I go for a walk for 10 minutes to like let the ideas crystallize then I come back into my studio and I'm like okay 20 minutes let's go I'm ready what happens all right so then you're ready to start. Um, but what kind of ready are you? So you've, you've scheduled and you've showed up and you have an, you've done the planning job where you're like, okay, great. But now you got to switch into the writing job. And so 
this isn't always a natural instant transition for folks. It's not for me. And it depends on the day and what have you. But I have a few different approaches that can that can help. And this is where we get into some prompts that sort of get you moving, right? Okay. And one is really wide open. Like, what are you ready to? So I, I'm going to experiment because I, I wonder, I want to show up, but I want you to be on the screen too, Jersey. Oh, well, let me add me. I can do that. Right. We'll do that right Maybe. now. What? what what's that? Actually, I could make myself smaller too. I don't need to be so big. Well, I could just All be right. a little, little genie on your shoulder too. Nice. That's cool. That works too. <laughs> All right. There we go. Um, okay. So here you go. You're ready to write. Um, time to go for it. And I already started doing this, you know, uh, something related to this, which is um, if you're really feeling ready, just start writing. Um, and you can do a topic focused free write. I know free writing is more free than being focused, but this is what I think of as a like a really functional form of of, of writing freely and uh so given your chosen constraints write to see what comes out in response so um so let's see why i know this matters more people just me uh it's it's when you see a story uh you know you care about you know, affects you let's say that's that i started writing that but then i'm i'm like well what i'm caring about today is a uh, user experience um it's a label um it, it mostly works. Uh, some folks have, you know, big concerns about it. And some folks don't know, don't know what it means. And there we go. And I, I, I say thank you if you like my clacky keyboard <laughs> right now. Or I'm sorry. Either way. There would be. There I, I, the clacking, it sounds like thoughtful, thoughtful input. Um, so what I love about this is you've just narrowed it down to three, three things that matter to me about this. And, mm -hmm. and, and to yes and you, this is my process for doing my Fabulous Secrets microcasts, which I post on my Patreon. I always come up with like the topic and I try to say, okay, what are three things that make me feel either really happy, really sad, really angry, whatever elicits a big feeling in me can I name three and I'll write them on a post-it note and then that's the beginning. So what you just did there is exactly what I do for my microcast anyway. The name three, that is gr like, it's a very functional format. And I actually, I thought about including that for sure as a, as one of the, I'm glad you brought it up because it's, um, it is such a powerful framing of getting ideas out because it's not just saying one thing. It's not just saying two things where, you know, just, something adjacent to something else that's better than it you know it gives you some travel for your ideas but then three three beats is is um is is more travel for your ideas it's more angles of comparison so that is a very functional prompt to consider is say three things about this and mm -hmm. that kind of you know came out as as i was you know working on this uh this this uh this raw set of thoughts here um <laughs> That's also triangulation. That's literally what triangulation is. Find three points, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. So if you're feeling that and you just, just keep going, right? So um, that is a very functional um, approach to get to, you know, to get, get those words out. But then, and so if I were, if I were to keep going on this, just to point this out, like, so then like Jersey um, mentioned, I might start with label. And then start, you know, doing some thoughts about that. It's like, like, just start asking why. Why do we use uh, labels, and how does that matter to this UX la label of UX? You're you're doing uh, good pedagogy with yourself uh, in that you're asking how and why questions instead of yes or no or what questions, right? That's well. The, Thank you. Uh, yeah, um, you will get more thoughts if if you have a thread to pull on. Like, there's if if you've just said, um, "Do labels matter? Are labels cool?" No. And <laughs> now, uh, so, so let's try that. Are labels cool? No. Um, 
because I said so is one way to <laughs> put it. Because I think, so you notice how I'm starting to write and have some dialogue with my own words that are coming out, but got to just keep, keep getting the words out. So um, can I back up this point? Um, let's see. We, I, all right. I mean, I, you, just because you use a yes or no answer um, as a, as a cue for yourself, you don't have to, re you can reply to your, your own cue points or prompts. You can be prompting yourself, which is, that's a good way to, that's, it's what we're demonstrating here is, is doing free writing and then prompting yourself as you, as you can continue. Um, so I don't, I don't have to answer the, our labels cool question, right? Right. So I can go any other direction I want. So I, I could, um, I can promote these things to all oh, that. They are separate sections. I'm going to expand, expound upon this. Um, but I don't necessarily do a lot of that sectioning yet. Um, but if it comes out, it comes out. Okay. So, all right, let's talk about more prompts, more prompt strategy. Mm -hmm. So you may not be ready to write this way. So um, try a question. Try to do another um it's almost like there's in we talked about implicit prompts where you've you're prepared enough you've got enough of a context and you can just start writing and then the writing generates more writing or what if you need to ask yourself a question or like or a fill in the blank to 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 get stuff moving so let's try a couple things um and i actually forgot that yeah i did have what three things make uh, matter to you on this so there we go that's powerful <laughs> Um, so we already did that. So, um, but just to, you know, be doubly clear, you, if you didn't have stuff just pop up, you can just say what three that you literally can type that, get words out, keep like, make the page not blank, right? Mm -hmm. What three things matter to me, to me about the label of UX. So it's, it's almost like, um, I mean, it speaks to, to practitioners, um, to uh, like build valuable skill that serves this, that serves people, it makes things better for humans, right? Help. All right. So I'm paraphrasing in my text. And then um, let's see. So I'm going to probably, I'm just going to numbered list this. So it speaks to, 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 so then I can continue. All right. So then that's the three prompt, right? Mm -hmm. And then that, if that is, you know, if, if you're, if you're not responding to the three prompt very well, I would, I would go back and, to, and say, are you sure you're ready to talk about this? Yeah. Um, because that's a good sign. And then you can, well, if you say, no, I think I am, you didn't try another thing like, um, all right. Um, use time temporal framing. So what did I just realize about this topic? Um, what did I realize about labels and, and user experience recently? So, um, and you, let's see what, and, and um, I, I noticed that it, it's divisive in some cases. So now you're digging into personal anecdote. Where does this come from? What experience have you had that have made you so interested in this topic? Yep, exactly. And then, it, and then you can say like, why am I struggling with this? Mm -hmm. um, because I mean, and honestly, I think the community has other important to work work to do. Um, I think the label matters a bit less than put uh, than than application of UX skills to help people. So, um, and then like another thing to add on to that. So that's what I'm struggling with. But then, how did it all start? And here's where I may say. I'm not going to say because this is a whole subtweet or um, or I am going to say because it's important to, you know, uh, thread dialogue and, and connect and try to integrate. But, you know, this is where you could 
You can add that or not. Um, another another prompt is a uh, is a question is to say, what is the big personal truth that you feel about this? That that feeling is a catalyst that can get the words out of you, right? Even if you're like, I don't want to tell people I'm grumpy, you know, I don't want to tell, you know, just get started with the feeling and then, you know, you can ungrump it later. Mm -hmm. um, so um, let's say, uh, yeah. Oop, you ever thought? I, I, just, I just think about like sometimes when I'm thinking about people who uh, have uh, ideas that I fundamentally disagree with when I'll be talking about them in casual conversation with friends or in my first draft, I might put these dum dums, you know, I'll put that in there. Right. I would never say that in any kind of pr public discourse or any proper piece of writing because it is not functional in that context. Right. So you can say, here's how their position is fundamentally wrong, but doing an ad hominem attack like that, that feels very cathartic when I'm around friends or when I'm just doing first draft, but it's only there to release that tension and point to the tensions so that I could be more careful and thoughtful about how I engage with it. Right. That, yeah, it's, you're leaving a breadcrumb trail and, but, mm. but you're actually going on the trail, right. Mm -hmm. Um, instead of just dumping a bunch of bread next to you and, and not moving. Right. <laughs> um, you, like letting that come out, even if it's contentious, is uh, it, it? I mean, you're doing the writing. The point is to do the to to get the writing out of you. The other, the right word. It's it is the it is the essence of um, conceptual creative work. It is very analogous to sketching, and so. Mm -hmm. And you say all the time that I mean, you're sketching to to you're putting down the wrong lines to so you can find the right ones, right? Yep, that's very analogous to first draft, second draft, final copy for sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and answer this. Uh, my personal truth is I worry that we will lose. Um, uh, the let's see, we'll lose the ability to spread human centered design if we keep fighting. Mm. each other about <laughs> label. I'm the most noble. No, I'm the most noble. Get out of here. You're not noble enough. And wh whether this is like, I can come up with stuff that makes this um, like, it, like it's a defensible stance. It's, it's not just a worry. It's a, it's a detection of a symptom in, that, that needs to be, you know, we need to spread awareness because you know, there, there's more to it. It's not about figuring out the more to it yet. It's just getting the, getting the it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. So that is the, that's the job of a prompt. Um, so okay, um, you can also fill in blanks too. Like you could just literally, just, if if um, if Mad Libs, if I know those are trademarked and all this kind of stuff, whatever. But like if you've played games that where you fill in blanks and you say butt and fart a lot in the mm -hmm. in the paragraphs. Mm -hmm. um, and they they make you giggle like that's a good tool right um but you'll probably want to say other things um <laughs> i imagine uh things like i have blank to say about blank right for uh first example when blank right just get that functioning um pr like you're you're prompting and saying just say this part just say this part don't say all the rest of the part just say that part and um that that lets you focus so um again to start to get the words out so you can con continue to get the words out all right so um now again when uh if you still aren't ready to write if you've prompted yourself a few times and and uh you find yourself stuck again i question um you know are you for sure are you sure you picked the right topic and uh if you are sure then then um uh, this is a technique we've mentioned recently on the show. And also I was a, a guest on a, a friend's podcast, uh, Craig and Dara at uh, the get smarter and uh, get make stuff and get smarter.com podcast um, where uh, he, there's a thing that Craig I've known that he's done for years that I forgot about. 
that it came up and it's the whole do something for one second <laughs> and then you're actually doing it so sure you've planned but have you have you put on the writer hat yet if you haven't put it on for one second see what comes out mm. slowly expand your resilience to the resistance and then try to write for 10 seconds and then try to like whatever comes out comes out and then increase to two minutes and eventually if you get up to like a 20 minute se uh, um, session that's a pretty functional chunk of time to get some writing done and if you go for more fantastic but um you have to get unstuck in order to get the post done so this food this is food for thought to say if you're that blocked um well that's that's something that you need to uh, change. So, all right. Well, what do you think, Jersey? Ready to go to the next phase? Yeah, let's do it. So, yeah, that sounds very manageable. It, I'm also reminded of the uh, unsinkable, is it Incredible Kimmy Schmidt or Unsinkable Kimmy Schmidt? Where she's oh. like, she has to run the crank for the generator in the bunker. And she's like, everything is tolerable for only 10 seconds. So she just run, runs it for 10 seconds, then counts another 10 seconds, then counts another 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. But but the idea is is in there. And this is something we've been talking about in this, this project for a long time is a two minute practice. It's like two minutes is a findable amount of time. And it's got a clear light at the end of the tunnel. If it's that painful to write for two minutes, well, you're going to be done in two minutes, right? You get to stop. Right. So it's yeah, absolutely. Very much wrapped, uh, wrapped into that. Um, in it, and it gives you a little, um, cycle to sort of deal with the dealing with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully you'll find a way to, to, you know, keep moving. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So now, so you started writing, um, try to get to 300 words or so. So, in your, like, even in this, even in this dialogue, I haven't been typing and writing every single thing I've been uh, saying, but I'm at 152 words just, you know, from this, you wow. know, demo session, right? 152 words. Um, they're not the greatest arrangement of thoughts and stuff because we've, we've gone through different, you know, trails of thought and examples, but um, let's see. Um, but I, we can, I could say like, which one of these is the most functional that I can get to some more words. And, um, so maybe I want to, you know, take out these words and I want to take out these words and I'm, and I'm, I'm really only at 16 words, <laughs> but, um, you know, you, um, following along with this you will probably not be jumping jumping toward, toward all these different things so let's say we've got um uh do 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 let's say i've i started writing i'm going to pull the um cooking show trick um and do that and do a little bit of editing and say that so i am at like 328 words with essentially just, I ended up just exploring labels so far. So that's a sign that mm. I may have a longer post in me, or maybe I just want to make this post about labels and give it enough context to um, make that focus make sense and cover more in, a, in, in another post. Um, okay. But you get to this point where you've developed your, um, you got enough words out where you're at around the 300 word mark and it's, it's a good time to do some reviewing and um, more sense making and shaping that, the, that. So you don't end up with um, like something I've, I've stumbled with sometimes is that I can keep writing one to 300 words on different angles over and over and over, but they don't weave together. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm all of a sudden at 2000 words and, I don't have an article. <laughs> um, so that can happen. And one way to avoid generating and generating is to, to, to stop yourself and say, well, where am I at here? So you can mm -hmm. review what you wrote, read it out, out loud and make edits. Look for things like clear language, um, beats, examples, jargon that really connect with that audience that you're, you know, that 
you're trying to reach. Um, and then you could also um, do some chunking it out into different headlines. So I might have realized that, well, I thought I was, um, I thought I was doing labels as only a section in a bigger document, but now I'm actually going to promote this where it's going to be, um, these are just points on the, the label idea. And then, um, whoops, and then I'm going to make other major points. And that's really going to be, um, you know, talking about how I, you know, I, I get how labels matter. And, and how can we make sense of that um, and still um, keep putting human-centered design to use? Maybe that's where my where I'm 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 sort of reshaping this stuff to so it makes sense as an overall message, right? Um, so, and that would come from uh, you know giving it a read through or right? labels. You know why do we, why do we label things for for things in the world? Favorite. Okay, so I could go on. I'm not going to read this whole article in this workshop, but actually reading out loud lets you hear your words. I'm just going to pick a random sentence. Um, I'm going to read it, um, the, the heading and then one sentence after that. All right, another section. Knowing an aspect of ourselves and one another. Hmm, is that a clear heading? Identifying groups where we feel belonging and recognizing each other's differences individually and collectively. That's another labeling other situation. Ooh, how do I feel about that? So then I can, you know, I can ask myself this, is, is this clear? Is this moving this whole point along? And um, is it in a good order? Because wait a minute. Uh Oh, I think I found some, like this happens a lot when in writing and I didn't believe it when you hear, I heard others say it. So what have you, but like, as you're writing, you're going to have like this, clear thought that in a way encapsulates all the the whole message right and it'll come out in a sentence or paragraph and that should be your lead probably mm, right yeah that's where the, that's where the term burying the lead comes from that makes a lot of sense l-e-d-e -E. yep i bury that lead <laughs> like it were my side gig it's like I bury leads left and right. So, all right. So knowing ourselves and aspects, uh, I get how labels matter. Uh, labels let us. All right. So, you know, so I'm all of a sudden I'm reshaping and reordering because I did that thing where, um, okay. So I reordered and I'm, I'm reading out loud and reshaping what's, what's helping this become more clear. Um, but then I found that, um, strong point, right? That's one of the best things to, to, to find when you're reordering is put that strong point right in the beginning. Uh, and then continue writing if it needs it. If I'm, I could be, you could have arrived at finishing your post with this reshaping with 300 words, 300 words can be enough. Um, but if it's not, you can, you can consider a couple more prompts. So describe, well, so what am, what are you liking so far about this post? Um, add more of that. That's a prompt. Um, so what do I like so far about this post? I like that it's getting more focused on labels, um, but still has a lost sight of the idea of um, the whole specific label of user experience design. Um, and then, so I'm answering that prompt question for myself. And do I need more of that? I could, now I can think about that. Another prompt, you can think about, well, what's missing? What do you wish were in this post. Um, give some words about that. Like, oh, wait a minute. I wish I had some reference to some information architecture, um, like inspiration, right? Information architecture is such a, you know, uh, taxonomy and vocabulary is such a big deal. And I'm talking to an, uh, uh, like an expert audience with this. I'm talking to user experience designers who are going to care about that. Anyway, so then, then I should go and add some words about, um, how labels and taxonomy are are important to have you know shape and make a make sense of a a, a space of ideas so what i, what I heard <laughs> in there was there was a zigzagging in your thought in that like what do i wish there was in there and then because 
this is the audience that I'm talking to. That's why I wish it was there. So there's a, my, my desire and the desire to be of service to them is a way that you like sort of checked the, the statement for truth. That's a really good point. Thank you. Um, <laughs> It's, yeah, those constraints don't disappear once you've started writing. So, yeah, good to to act, keep them integrated with, with the prompts and how you respond. All right. So, um, so then we've, you know, we put in enough work and um, let's say, de -de -de, and I realize that I needed a section and I'm doing the cooking show metaphor again. And boop. And now I'm up to 513 words. <laughs> um, and what is really important to me is that I need to finish this and I need to get it out to, because this posting is, a, is in part about showing up and being of service and connecting and, and, um, and being a connectable point in an, in an, with an audience that cares about a particular topic, right? So, all right. I need to finish this. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying this is close to done, but I need to be sure it's ready to, to, to publish. Right. So I'm, again, I'm going through those different hats, like acknowledging that I'm putting time in for sure as different um, ways of looking at this, creating a post endeavor. So I'm going to reread what I wrote again and make any tweaks and edits and along the way, I'm doing, um, I could use tools like, um, uh, I know there's, there's whole websites you can, you can get, um, uh, subscriptions to and stuff, but like I use a, um, a tool called marked.app and for, for articles where I'm like, eh, I really want to, you know, make sure this is extra crisp and refined. I will use something like that where it is in, in a way it's like a markdown previewer that has baked in things like, um, like what, what level, uh, what group, what reading level heuristic is this, right? Um, it looks for passive voice, uh, that, that can be a, uh, passive voice can be a thing to try to, uh, it's not the strong, it's, it's, it's a way to avoid accountability in writing. And it has a kind of, it, um, it doesn't have a great ring to it when you when you read that stuff written in a passive voice. Um, you will not come off as clear thinking or um, helping others be. It's almost like you're trying to pass off a a, a bit of truth as um, um, well, but not owning it, right? Mm, mm, so, mm. Um, is this is this the app by Brett Terpstra? Yeah, it is. Okay, well then I will pull it up so we can see. Mm. Marked two markdown preview. Mm -hmm. Really cool, cool app. If that hit, that fits your your workflow, it's uh, available on Mac, and uh, you can. They're not a sponsor, but you can you can buy it both through as a, the set app subscription. So it comes with a bunch of other apps, but now you have a subscription, or you can buy it individually. So mm. um, really good tool because in a way it's kind of like getting a little bit of coaching on like. Eh, you use passive voice a little bit, or you use this same word a whole bunch of times kind of thing. So um, if you, depends on the formality and all that kind of stuff. If you're going to a, your personal lab blog and the voice has is less formal, um, you did enough to make sure you had a good message. You don't have to um, torture yourself about perfection in this message. So depends on your venue and, and what you feel is at stake with that. So if you want to do at least doing spells check and then also looking for any links you missed, is it worth linking to other things that, that uh, get that give credit or are convenient in that they're important other ideas mentioned and stuff like that. So adding links you missed is a worthwhile step along this way and then publish. So there you go. There's so, the journey. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that, you know, that's a process. This is what I found is, is like these different things have been working for me to get stuff shipped. But, um, you know, of course there's all kinds of other paths to this. Very cool. Well, uh, I have a feeling that you're going to have some prompts for us to try in the, this, this mini workshop, but before we do that, maybe we should take a break and then. All right. So, 
Uh, okay, so let me get rid of my webcam on your video, and I'll switch back to... Uh, there we go. So if this mini workshop is helping you think and do useful creative work, a great way to help the show is to buy the products we make. And the thing that I, I would like you to interact with, you don't even have to buy it. There's nothing to buy. It's a free thing. And it's related to this topic in that it is the 4 Million Years Later podcast, a story analysis show. Uh, it answers the question, does creativity thrive in freedom or constraints? This is a story analysis podcast wherein the subject of study is the 1980s Transformers cartoon. But I'm not into Transformers, Jersey. Wait. We watch an episode a week and dig deep to explore the story's structure and meaning. We infer the writer's intentions and synthesize them with the, within the context of the conflicting needs of a daily television show explicitly designed to advertise toys. So yes, it's about the Transformers, but it's also the meta is like analyzing what we're reacting to, noticing it, and putting language to it. So you can, oh, you can find it at 4millionyearslater.com or in podcatchers everywhere. Well, and I make a workshop or a bunch of workshops. One of those, I would think you will get a great amount of utility out of um, getting your own copy would be listening like a coach. This is about helping folks getting unstuck in their projects and goals by helping them think through things. And you're that that navigator, that guide. And, and you might think, well, wait a minute. Why is this useful? Why does that, why does that sound helpful? Well, you're someone who practices the, um, well, creativity, pursuit, navigate, uh, like, like discipline of making the stuff. And you, you practice, you know, choosing what you make and all this stuff all the time. You will work with other collaborators and peers will, who just come up and, and will ask you things, I would imagine, from time to time. And so when you're in that position, if someone asks you for advice, do you want to just tell them what they should do? Or you want to get into more about their thinking and how they see it and help them explore a process of coaching so you can you can grow as a leader or a coaching peer um, as a fellow artist where you're helping people um, just unpack and navigate forward through whether it's a it's a career concern or what's the next big project or book or topic they should take on um, opportunities there's always these puzzles when we we're, we're making stuff and you can help others find their own way through that and it helps you grow in your career as well. So you can get your own copy of Listening Like a Coach at gum.co slash L-L-A-C-W-S. And again, that URL is gum.co slash L-L-A-C-W-S. Okay, well, let's, let's look at our prompt. What is the prompt we're going to try, Rob? Well, so... Um, I assume you have somewhere that needs a post you somewhere your audience is calling out to you. You want to respond to them with a post and uh, use this process to write a blog post, to create an email or a newsletter or a Twitter thread. Even um, having a well thought out twi Twitter thread can have a good flow to it. Um, or even a forum post, whether it's Patreon, discord or Slack anywhere the, mm. If you put together your thoughts in this kind of way where you've shaped them with the constraints and all that, it, that uh, uh, where you've, you've sort of pulled on the, a way to get your own ideas out in, in, in some way that uh, you care about, like, that's just going to speak to people. And, and so that's, that's a worthwhile thing. Um, what you need to do this is just a text editor of some sort. You can... You, you can be the, the super disciplined, calculated stunt person who says, I'm on a laptop where if the power goes out and um, I'm hitting save frequently enough and I don't, I, I've, I've, I really am pretty sure this WordPress form isn't going to eat my post. Go for it then. That's great. Um, I, I don't want to yuck anyone's yum wherever you feel like this is where I write. Go ahead and write there. and um, I think it's useful to have that uh, um, word count mechanism. It just lets you know how wordy you're being. Or, you know, is that too wordy, not wordy enough yet? And that's a helpful thing along the way. Um, so let's see, what else would be required to try? Um, I think even if you don't know, like, how you want to say something, 
but just knowing what you want to say, just you, you, you have something, it's worth it. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll say these encouraging words. Um, you for sure have words to say like any, and more than you probably realize. And the words are in you and letting them out will work. That's good. Yeah. And trusting the process of putting the words out to find what you're really trying to say. Um, I don't know how many times on this very podcast I have been doing what I playfully call my intellectual tumbling down the stairs so to finally arrive at, I think I'm saying this, and then you come back with even more clarity, right? Um, and it's, it's a tough one because we can get bewildered by our first thought of what the function of this writing is supposed to be. So for instance, the, one of the things that I wrote down after participating in this workshop is I have a welcome to my mailing list email to write for my new MailChimp account that I have last week mentioned for the first time. Join me for the journey of making Baron, Baron Von Baron. And I logged into MailChimp and was like, hey, you didn't do a welcome email yet when people sign up. I'm like, oh, that's right. Well, I got I to gotta do that. And my first thought was, well, I'll use this at their expectations. These are the things I'm going to share with you. I'm like, well, those are facts. And also those are fungible facts because like you may change your mind later on. So does that really like activate anybody? Does that tell them why they hit yes to the subscribe button? Or can I tell the story of why telling these personal stories through talking animal characters is important to me? Where does it come from in my biography? What did I learn when I was a young person from fiction that helped sustain me? And why is why am I putting that into my work now? Right? Whoa, that's a lot different introduction, right? Now I feel more connected to you and your ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's different. And, and I know we all have all kinds of writing that can start as a, um, a, a catalog table of contents and okay, but make that, make that just one of your constraints and add, add more to it. Cause you're going to find something in there. You're going to find something that about, about the why and what matters to you, what matters to your audience. It's, yeah. it's in there. You, you, mm -hmm. you put some words out, but maybe, maybe yeah. not enough. Uh, so oh, that's really cool. It sounds like it, this might have been useful for your your newsletter. Looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Got it right here. Got it right. captured. Nice. So thanks, Rob. Uh, I think this is a good workshop. So Should what's we do a next? Summary? Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Let's let's review what we talked about today. Yeah. Let's review. Um, okay. So again, you you want to write a post uh, quickly and have it really mean something to you and your audience here use these prompts and constraints um so get prepared um have an idea about the the whole the effect of time your what do you know and are are what are you ready to say what container where's this going to go and and your audience and why why would they care about it so those constraints are really useful to you throughout this entire writing process um, they don't have to block you, but they, but you check in and they, they get you started and they get you verified along the way. Then you get, then you get going free, write or choose a prompt and ask yourself that, you know, to answer it, get the words out. Those are your answer. Put the words into your text editor. And then after about 300 words or so, uh, you've got enough maybe to shape and, and, and edit and, continue down a more focused path than if you keep generating more, more words and ideas. Um, those 300 words with a little bit of reshaping, you may have your strong idea already put that in the front of your copy and then keep going to finish it with final edits and maybe some links and then, uh, you know, refer to the stuff that helped make this possible and, and is, uh, are also useful to know, um, such a great media hypertext is powerful and, and, and amazing. Uh, and then post it. There you go. That's our process for getting a prompt out that matters. Uh, write a prompt, write a post quickly with some prompts and constraints. Sweet. Thank you, Rob. Uh, anything left to cover before we close it out? Uh, no, I don't think so. I didn't mention, I mean, you can see, uh, over a hundred examples of me exploring and discovering and figuring this out uh, on my blog at interactive-storyteller.com. 
which <laughs> I'll mention in the closing also. But uh, there's a that's where um, that's where I worked through this and help me help me put this together to share with you today. Well, I'm I'm grateful that you took the time to package up your experience and transmit it in a way that we can all act upon it. So thanks for that, Rob. Um, that's that's that feels very lean into Artie. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the practice. Love it. Uh, all right. Well, let's all try writing from prompts, and uh, you know, please consider liking and subscribing to this video, or if you're listening to the audio, you know, giving us a five star review wherever you listen to us. Write a review that helps more people find the show as well. And uh, don't forget to hang out. If you have any comments, questions, thoughts, or wonderings, come hang out in the Lean Into Art Discord at leanintoart.com slash discord. And the audio podcast is at leanintoart.com and patreon.com slash leanintoart. Until next time, I've been Jersey Droz of rss.jdroz.com. But I've been Rob Stenzinger. You can find my stuff at interactive-storyteller.com. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user leanintoart, and you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.